The Georgia Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide, they both roll on to huge victories, and Ohio State Buckeyes survive a scare. And yes, the Huskies and the Ducks are still trying to get into the Big Ten Conference. All of this and more on episode 32. Welcome to College Football Speaker on the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. Let's first get right into week one results. A uh, lot of good games last night, some clunkers, some surprise disappointing performances such as North Carolina State Wolfpack and some dreadful performances from the Virginia Tech Hokies and the Iowa Hawkeyes. So let's get to it and then we'll talk about the Huskies and the Ducks still trying to get into the Big Ten because yes, they're still trying to get into the Big Ten Saw a lot of comments yesterday, Um, baffling comments from people out west and other national reporters and consultants, but we'll get into that in the second half of this episode. Let's get into the results of week one. Uh, Alabama rolls on. They win 55-0 over Utah State. They average 8.7 yards a rush. Uh, nothing really to say more than that. Bryce Young went a pedestrian 18 for 28. But Alabama, they ran that ball. They're going to be tough. Um, Ohio State survives the scare with Notre Dame. 21 to 10 was the final score. Notre Dame's defense gave up an incredible fight. C.J. Stroud could not make completions down the field. Notre Dame played in a two-deep zone. Uh, They force Ohio State to drive down the field throwing short passes. Jackson Smith, the Jigba, was injured. I think he's the number one receiver in the country. His leg got stretched out there. I believe it was his left leg. He was limping along. I think Pat Day made the correct decision to pull that young man out of the game. And Ohio State, they struggled until the end when they finally decided to focus on running the football against that zone defense that Notre Dame was playing. Williams and Mayan Williams got the ball at, the, at that last drive and just ran like a truck. And Ohio State was able to put the game away. Henderson had about 91 yards. Williams, 84 yards. Notre Dame, they put up a great fight. I did not think they were they're going to put up that good a game. They're going to be a little... Um, don't know if they have enough juice on offense to have a 10, 11 win, winning season. But their defense is really good. Tyler Buckner is a quarterback, a young man, tough kid. Of course, they have the great tight end, tight end mayor. But Ohio State was able to survive 21 to 10. I suspect Ohio State will be much improved going into week two and week three. Georgia rolls all over Oregon. 49-3, to uh, Bennett went 25 of 31, 368 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. The so-called game manager extraordinaire, you know, after week one, he's like he's like the leading Heisman candidate, fantastic uh, quarterback play. And, of course, Oregon, I, I think them being the 11th ranked it was too high. I don't have them winning the pack. I don't think they're ready for 2022. The quarterback position, I'm not a big fan of Bo Nix. I've talked about that in previous episodes. He does not throw an accurate enough ball downfield. And he makes just too many mistakes. He's a, he's a, he's another tough, tough kid uh, who's been hit a lot in his career at Auburn and now here at Oregon. But Oregon does not have the quarterback play. I, I don't think they'll be compete for the Pac-12 championship. So I look for Oregon to fall down in the ratings rankings, probably 19th or 20th after this performance. Georgia rolls all over them, 49 to three. Texas A&M shuts out Sam Houston. Texas A&M 31 to nothing. Uh, it's nice to see the quarterback uh, Haynes get he King get back on the field after his injury, but the running game was non-existent against Sam Houston. That's a little scary. We know Texas A&M is going to bring the defense. Uh, They were able to complete passes downfield, which they haven't been able to do the last couple years in the Jimbo Fisher. 
But the running game was non-existent, something that we have to look at going into week two, week three, week four, especially when Texas A&M gets into the SEC schedule. Got to get that running game going. Uh, the next game, Florida 29, Utah 26, the Florida Gators. What a game. Anthony Richardson is a star. He is a star. Um, what did he get? Um, he got over 100 yards, 100 yards rushing, 100 yards pass. No, 68 yards rushing, excuse me. About 170, 80 yards passing. Florida. Utah, Cameron Ryzen makes an interception, throws an interception late in the game as they were driving to at least kick a field goal to tie it, to put in an overtime, or for a touchdown. They were in the red zone, and Ryzen threw a bad pass. Uh, great quarterback. Utah finally got their running game going in the second half. Um, Davian Thomas had 115 yards. I was surprised Utah couldn't get the running game going in the first half. Florida does have a weakness on the defensive line. They're very thin. You got to give that coach a lot. Billy Napier, you got to give him a lot of credit, Gator fans. They won a huge game in his, in his opening game as the Gators head coach. What a game. Um, big victory for the Gators. And I love Napier's offense. I don't know... He had so much pre-snap movement going on. I, man, I think this team's going to get better and better and better on offense. Defense, I think their depth issues are going to cause them problems. So, you know, I had Florida finishing 6-6. Six and six. Obviously, now I'm going to have to bump them up to 7-5 and five or 8-4. and four. Promising first season for Billy Napier down at Gainesville, Florida. Next game, Michigan. 51, Colorado State 7, Michigan they should be the fourth-rated team in the country. Don't understand their ranking. Cat Cade McNamara had a not-so-good game, 9 of 18. J.J. McCarthy came in later in the game, went 4 for 4. J.J. McCarthy is going to start in the next game against Hawaii. We, we discussed this before. I do not like what Jim Har Harbaugh is doing. If they want to give the ball to J.J. McCarthy, just do it. Have him be the starter. Have him be the starter. Having J.J. McCarthy roll up 350 yards against Hawaii in the first half isn't going to tell us anything new. If you want to go J.J. McCarthy, do it, Jim Harbaugh. But I think he's playing with dynamite here. But Michigan rolls on to win their uh, first game, 51-7 over Colorado State. Oklahoma, 45, UTEP, 13th. Ninth seed rated Oklahoma. Not much to say about this game. Um, Eric Ray got over 100 yards. Gabriel, the transfer from UCF, went 15 to 23. Uh, the defense on yeah, on the ground gave up nothing, um, but on the pass defense, Oklahoma Sooners have had issues with that over the last few years. They were a little leaky there. It's something we got to watch for in the next few weeks. But Oklahoma rolls. Baylor rolls. What can I say? 69 to 10 over Albany. Didn't learn a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but Chapin, the great quarterback, I love that guy. Of course, he goes 17 for 20 to start the season. Um, I think he's I think he's special. I think Baylor's quarterback is special. NC State, terrible performance. They just eke out a victory. 21 to zero over or 21 to 20 over East Carolina. East Carolina misses a extra point to tie the game with about four minutes to go in the game. I believe it was a bad snap. The holder had problems with the snap. Uh, the kicker shanks it to the left. And then East Carolina had a makeable field goal to win the game at the end of the game. And the kicker kicked it wide. Wide right. So North Carolina State survives. Leary, that was not a good game by the quarterback of the Wolfpack. I love that guy. But he did not... They did not perform well. I suspect North Carolina State to drop in the rankings from 13 to about 16, 17. They got lucky. North Carolina State got lucky. And I have them having winning the ACC. And sometimes you need to be lucky for a team like NC State to finally break through to the other side. I have them winning the ACC championship game. They're going to have to play a whole lot better than they did yesterday. Week one. USC rolls 66-14 over Rice. Three defensive touchdowns. Pick six by USC. K-9 
Caleb Williams, big game. Not much to say about that. USC is going to move up in the rankings. It could be about 10, I suspect, 11 or 10 in the next poll. Miami, 70 to 13 uh, over Beth and Cookman. Uh, not much to say there. Van Dyke went about 13 for 16, and they pulled him. Uh, Parrish, running back, ran for over 100 yards. Uh, big, easy victory for Miami first week. Wisconsin rolls over Illinois State, 38 to 0. Uh, Mertz, Graham Mertz, goes uh, 14 to 16. So he told me to be quiet already. Uh, you know, I'm not a big Graham Mertz fan, but he, he, had a, he had a good game against Illinois State. And, of course, Braylon Allen runs for 148 yards. Had a 96-yard run for a touchdown. What a beast. Wisconsin rolls. Arkansas, 31 to 24. A.J. Jefferson, my... <clears throat> Excuse me, my finalist, my fifth guy to go to the Heisman uh, candidate uh, celebration. A.J. Jefferson had a good game, 18 for 26, threw for three touchdowns, rushed for 62 yards. Uh, Arkansas was favored by six and a half. They won by seven over Cincinnati. Good win, good first week win for that program. And Ole Miss. 28 to 10 over Troy and Lane Kiffin. His team gets it done on the ground. Oh, I skipped the Kentucky game. I'm sorry. Kentucky 37 over 37 13 over Miami, Ohio. Kentucky could not run the ball at all. That is pretty scary. Not being able to run the ball against Miami, Ohio, Mac, a middle of the road Mac team. Um, but Levis was able to go 21 to 32. Tavon Robinson. The transfer from Virginia Tech had six catches for over 130 yards. Uh, they needed him because uh, they could not run the ball. Kentucky, 37-13. Now Ole Miss, I'm sorry. Ole Miss, 28-10 over Troy, and they were able to run the ball. Jackson Dart got the start at quarterback for Ole Miss. Zach Evans, the transfer from TCU, 20 carries for 130 yards. Quinshawn Judkins, a true a freshman, rolls for another 87 yards. So Ole Miss getting it done on the ground this year, and they probably will all year long with uh, Zach Evans, the transfer from TCU. Absolute superstar. Houston gets by struggles. They win 37 to 35. Uh, triple overtime. Quarterback Thune runs it in for a two-point conversion. Terrible performance from Houston. They should be knocked out of the top 25 for this performance. Um, I'm guessing they probably won't be, but they should be. Houston should roll this year. They should go 11-1 and one this year. Uh, this was a bit scary. Why couldn't they run the ball? Houston Cougars projected to have a really good offensive line, could not run the ball. Um, that seems to be a theme in week one for many of these top 25 teams. BYU, though, could run the ball. Transfer, Chris Brooks, transferred from California, 135 yards. As a total, BYU runs for 312 yards. Um, and some other performances, notable performances in week one. Virginia Tech loses to Old Dominion again. It's going to take a couple years for Pride to get that program up and running. Um, Iowa Hawkeyes. They defeat North Dakota 7-3. Petrus was something like, the quarterback Petrus was something like 11 for 25. The most startling thing to watch from a Big Ten perspective is Iowa Hawkeyes offensive line is not any good. And I know, I know in Iowa City they were worrying about that offensive line before the season started. Terrible, terrible performance from Iowa. Um, they're going to have to get better fast, and I don't know how they do it. They lost Charlie Jones, right? Their, number, their wide receiver, their special teams player. He goes to Purdue, transfers interconference in the same division, and he gets 12 catches for Purdue. Uh, he made the right decision to be transferring. Um, and then you got Spencer Rattler. Not a great performance for South Carolina. Something got to keep up. The guy throws such a great ball. Um, his performances 
23 of 37, two interceptions, only 227 yards. Hopefully uh, for South Carolina, he plays a lot better here in the next couple weeks. So those are week one results. Um, I believe my predictions, peek around the corner predictions against the spread, I think we're sitting at 7-3-1 and one for the season. Uh, I'll have to double check that. My prediction next episode, I did lose the Ohio State and the Utah plays, and I did win the Arkansas play, and I was six one and one going into to yesterday. So I think I I think I'm seven three and one. I'll have to double check that. My predictions are every Tuesday, every Tuesday. So Tuesday's episode will be my predictions for week two. If you want to catch that? Oh, and please before we get to the. Uh, the Huskies and the Ducks, if you like this content, please hit the like button. Please share the video and subscribe to our channel as we march towards 1,000 subscribers. We thank you so much for your support. Now, let's get to it. Huskies, Ducks. Washington Huskies, or Oregon Ducks. Oregon Ducks. Yes, they're trying to get to the Big Ten. They're still trying to get to the Big Ten. We had this breaking news that the conference football playoffs were expanding. We're expanding from 4 to 12, probably beginning in 2026. I saw a whole lot of commentary out west and even in other parts of this country about how now Oregon and Washington will not want to come to the Big Ten because it's easier for them because the conference football playoffs is 12 teams, six top-ranking conference championship teams, will get automatic bids to the playoffs, and the other six spots will be at large berths. So, in theory, it will be easier for Washington and Oregon to compete for a Pac-12 championship and then get an automatic berth into the college football playoffs. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to join the Big Ten Conference. My answer to, to that is this. Do you think that USC and UCLA regret their decision to join the Big Ten? Using the logic of Oregon and Washington now no longer want to join the Big Ten because it's easier for them in the Pac-12? Better yet, ask yourself the following question. Do you think Oklahoma and Texas regret making that phone call to Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC. Do you think they regret now joining the SEC? Because it's a lot tougher in the SEC to make the college football playoffs than it would if they stayed in the big Oklahoma and Texas stay in the Big 12. No, Oklahoma and Texas does not do not regret their decision to join the SEC. USC, UCLA do not regret their decision to join the Big 10 2024. And no, Washington and Oregon haven't suddenly said, no, I do not want to try to join the Big Ten. <clears throat> Excuse me. The world has changed. I've tried, we at Peek Around the Corner have tried to explain this. The world has changed. The money, the difference in money that Oregon Ducks would get staying as a Pac-12 member versus becoming a Big Ten member from 2024 to 2030 could be around $200 million. I think that's a good figure to throw out. Yes, I don't know for sure, but I think there's going to be a $30, $35 million difference at least in the conference payouts between Pac-12 and Big Ten. Not only the difference of money, but the difference of exposure Exposure is the big difference as well. If you if Oregon and Washington become Big Ten members, their exposure to not just their football program, but their all their sports becomes magnified tenfold. We are getting into a situation where there are going to be direct payments made to student athletes from the conferences and or the universities, probably from the conferences. Right, they're going to be making conferences are going to be creating these big, huge NIL deals, and they're also going to be taking their media money that they receive in these big contracts and paying directly to the student athletes. <clears throat> this is going to cause such a huge recruiting advantage 
for those schools in the Big Ten and the SEC. It doesn't mean that you have to be in one of those two conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC, to win a football national championship or a baseball national championship or a softball national championship. <clears throat> but the path to winning a national championship grows much narrower if you're not in the Big Ten and SEC going forward. Because the money that the SEC and the Big Ten are going to be able to spend on their Olympic sports, on their non-revenue sports, and of course their football and basketball programs. Oklahoma and Texas are not sitting back saying, oh geez, we better stay in the Big 12 because we can qualify for that 12-team playoff a lot easier. I'm not even sure if that's correct. There's going to be six at-large berths every season. You know two or three of those are going to be uh, sucked up by the SEC teams. And probably one or two of those from the Big Ten teams. And then you've got Notre Dame hanging out there as an independent still. No, no. I, 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 I got so disheartened reading these comments from really smart people on Twitter and reporters talking about on TV, about how suddenly <clears throat> Big Ten, it shouldn't be a destination from Oregon to Washington because it's so much easier to win a national championship staying in the Pac-12. No, that's not correct. In my humble, strong opinion on it, the world has changed. Pac-12 payouts are not going to be anywhere near SEC in the Big Ten. Therefore, and, and let me throw in another point that I think is very vital. For the last couple of months, this expanded college football playoffs, this has been reported on. These presidents of these universities, these commissioners, they were expecting this to happen. Momentum was, was growing for this to happen at some point for this expanded college football playoffs. Washington and Oregon and Stanford, they know this is, was coming down the, the pike. But yet they're still proceeding to try to get into the Big Ten. Will they be able to join the Big Ten by the 2024 football season? That largely depends on the offers that the Big Ten gets from potential new media partners in creating more uh, content for the Big Ten. Will the numbers come in good enough to where Oregon and Washington and possibly Stanford for come in at a, at a slight uh less money going to them if they join the Big Ten. It's still going to be way more than the Pac-12 will get will give those three universities. So no, Oregon and Washington are not regretting their attempts to try to get in the Big Ten. They're still trying to get into to the Big Ten. Oklahoma and Texas do not regret trying to get... They do not regret joining the SEC starting in 2025. Okay? And you, USC, UCLA do not regret joining the Big Ten in 2024. There are no regrets on that because they all recognize that the world was changing and it has changed and it will change some more. These big power conferences are going to be growing more and more in power. Therefore, no. Oregon and Washington, if they could choose, they would not want to stay in the Pac-12, even with the expanded college football playoffs. Please, if you agree with me or disagree disagree with me, put in the comments section below the video. I read all the comments. And again, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share the video. We appreciate you all so very much. Until next time, from all of us at Peek Around the Corner to all of you, please, you all take care of each other. Thank you so very much.